In the heart of the ancient world, where the sand stretches far as the eye can see, lies the timeless land of Egypt. While the pyramids and pharaohs of this magnificent civilization often steal the spotlight, there's another remarkable story that has remained shrouded in the mists of time, the weather of ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt, often referred to as the gift of the Nile, thrived along the banks of this majestic river. The Nile River, with its annual floods and consistent seasons, played a pivotal role in shaping the life of the people. But what about the rest of Egypt's weather? Let's embark on a journey to explore the mysteries of the Egyptian climate. To understand the weather of ancient Egypt, one must first comprehend its unique geography. Egypt is a land of stark contrast, with the Nile River cutting through the heart of a vast desert. Along its banks, lush vegetation flourished, providing a stark contrast to the arid landscape that surrounded it. The country was divided into two main regions, the Nile Valley and the Nile Delta. The Nile River was the lifeblood of Egypt, and its annual inundation was a gift that kept on giving. When the rains fell in the Ethiopian highlands, the Nile would swell, flooding the surrounding land with nutrient-rich silt. This annual flood, or inundation, was a source of rejuvenation and sustenance for the Egyptians. The climate of ancient Egypt was characterized by three main seasons. Inundation, or Akat, marked the flood season when the Nile would overflow its banks. Next came Peret, the growing season, when farmers would sow their seeds in the fertile, newly deposited soil. Finally, Shimu, the harvest season, brought an abundance of crops, and the cycle would begin again. These consistent seasons allowed Egypt to sustain itself for centuries. The weather influenced every aspect of ancient Egyptian life. From the crops they cultivated to the clothes they wore, the people of Egypt adapted to their environment. Agriculture was the cornerstone of their society, and the predictable flood cycle of the Nile allowed farmers to plan their planting and harvesting with precision. While the Nile Valley and the Delta were the agricultural heart of ancient Egypt, the regions beyond these fertile lands presented a different set of challenges and opportunities. The vast deserts, known as the Western Desert or the Libyan Desert, and the Eastern Desert or the Arabian Desert, were inhospitable and unforgiving landscapes. These deserts, with their searing heat and arid expanses of sand, were harsh environments that would deter most. But the ancient Egyptians saw potential beyond the green banks of the Nile. The Western Desert, also known as the Libyan Desert, concealed a wealth of precious resources beneath its shifting sands. The ancient Egyptians ventured into this desolate landscape for various reasons, primarily driven by their insatiable quest for valuable minerals. Here, in the desolation of the Western Desert, they extracted minerals like gold, amethyst, and even turquoise, which were highly prized for their use in jewelry and ornamentation. The allure of these treasures drove the Egyptians to navigate the formidable desert terrain. On the other side of the Nile, the Eastern Desert, also known as the Arabian Desert, provided a different set of opportunities. It served as a vital passage to the Red Sea, a gateway to the outside world. The ancient Egyptians established trade routes that crisscrossed the Eastern Desert, connecting the Nile Valley to the Red Sea coast. These routes allowed for the transport of goods like copper, precious stones, and exotic goods from faraway lands. The deserts were not just a source of wealth and trade, but also a destination for spiritual quests. The vast, unspoiled expanses of the desert were seen as a conduit to the divine. Egyptian ascetics and seekers ventured into the deserts in search of solitude and spiritual enlightenment. It was believed that the quiet isolation of the desert allowed one to commune with the gods and achieve a higher state of consciousness. 
the skies above Egypt held profound significance in the daily lives and beliefs of the ancient Egyptians. The sun god Ra, the bringer of light and life, was at the center of their celestial beliefs. Ra was believed to travel across the sky in a solar bark, a celestial vessel that carried the sun from the eastern horizon to the western horizon. The daily journey of Ra marked the passage of time and was central to the Egyptian calendar. The Egyptians closely observed the stars, particularly the star Sirius, which they called Sotis. The heliacal rising of Sirius, or its first appearance in the eastern dawn sky just before sunrise, coincided with the annual flood of the Nile. This alignment of Sotis and the Nile inundation was a celestial sign that heralded the beginning of the fertile season. The ancient Egyptians used this knowledge to predict the timing of the annual flood and plan their agricultural activities accordingly. The celestial movements weren't merely observed, they were woven into the fabric of Egyptian culture. The Opit festival, a grand celebration, was held in the city of Thebes during the flood season. It was a time of feasting, music, and dancing, all in honor of the Nile's life-giving waters. The festival served as a unifying event for the people, reinforcing the connection between the divine and the natural world. Offerings and ceremonies during the Opit festival were believed to ensure the continued fertility of the land. While the ancient Egyptians possessed a deep understanding of the seasons and celestial movements, they also practiced early meteorology. Using simple but effective instruments like the Merkit, they monitored the stars and the heavens to predict the onset of the flood season. The Merkit, a sighting instrument, allowed astronomers to align specific stars with the horizon, providing them with a reliable method for predicting the annual inundation. To gauge changes in atmospheric pressure and predict weather patterns, the Egyptians used a simple but ingenious instrument known as the Nilometer. Located on the banks of the Nile, this stone shaft measured the river's water levels with remarkable precision. A higher water level indicated potential flooding, while lower levels suggested a less vigorous inundation. The readings from the Nilometer were crucial for agricultural planning, and they helped mitigate the impact of inconsistent inundations. The science of weather and celestial observations were closely linked with religious practices. Priest astronomers held the responsibility of monitoring celestial movements and interpreting their significance. Their role went beyond scientific measurements, they were intermediaries between the people and the gods. The accurate prediction of the annual flood was not only a matter of agricultural success, but also a testament to the divine favor. The ancient Egyptians attributed weather phenomena to various gods and goddesses, each with their own sphere of influence. Utha, the goddess of love and motherhood, was also associated with the sky and rain. She was believed to bring rain and fertility to the land, and her benevolence was sought to ensure a prosperous harvest and the flourishing of life along the Nile. Tefnut, the goddess of moisture, played a crucial role in the Egyptian pantheon. Her sphere of influence extended to rain and dew, and she was invoked to bring relief in times of drought. The Egyptians recognized the delicate balance between arid conditions and the need for moisture, and Tefnut was seen as the guardian of this equilibrium. Weather played a pivotal role in Egyptian rituals and ceremonies. The Feast of the Valley, for instance, was a grand celebration that revolved around the flooding Nile, a lifeline of ancient Egypt. During this annual event, the pharaoh would perform ceremonies to ensure the river's abundance in the coming year. Offerings, music, and dance were part of the festivities, and the people expressed their gratitude to the gods for the life-giving inundation. In times of drought or when the inundation appeared uncertain, the ancient Egyptians turned to rain dances and offerings to beseech the gods for mercy. 
These rituals, often performed by priests and community leaders, were an expression of the people's dependence on the weather for their survival. The weather of ancient Egypt, despite its predictability, presented challenges. Inconsistent inundations could lead to famine, while excessive flooding could result in disaster. The ancient Egyptians faced these challenges with a blend of science, spirituality, and adaptation. The delicate balance between too much and too little water was a perennial concern. The Egyptians learned to adapt by constructing irrigation canals and devising methods to control the flow of water. For the ancient Egyptians, the weather was both a blessing and a potential curse. While the annual inundation brought life and fertility, it also had the power to unleash destruction. Their survival depended on their ability to harness the forces of nature, turning the whims of the weather into a source of prosperity. This is just one chapter in the epic tale of the land of pharaohs and pyramids. The weather of ancient Egypt, a blend of science, spirituality, and adaptation, is a testament to the enduring relationship between humanity and the natural world.